Well, I think, you know, from a polling standpoint, you know, clearly, uh, you know, it wasn't the best of polling environments. Uh, and I think that the, you know, the autopsies that occur um, are tend to be premature. It's a, they, you know, how the polls did not hit it are always good Wednesday morning stories uh, right after the election. And, you know, we knew this time that the narrative was going to change because of the early vote. And we knew that the early vote was going to be counted later in the Rust Belt states. And so, you know, when we went to bed, that's a euphemism on election night, uh, we were, you know, I mean, the idea that Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Michigan might look a lot different uh, in the morning. Um, and as uh, you know, the, the Biden uh, numbers nationally would continue to grow. Uh, to the point now that the expectation is he may win by five or six points on the national vote. Um, had we known that in the beginning, I think the narrative would have been very different. Um, having said that, there were clearly some states that surprised people. Um, and I think it raises questions not about whether polls have a value. Uh, you know, we can talk about there is a value and there remains a value. Um, and there were things that the polls did very good this year. Um, you know, the, not the least of which is we're talking about the battleground states. We wouldn't know those were the battleground states uh, had we not known that those were the competitive states. And, uh, you know, and so the polls provide that roadmap and, and really help uh, with the media and the public and kind of getting an understanding of where things are in the race, what issues are dominating, uh, and what role the COVID-19 was going to play in this, the economy, healthcare, the environment, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, there was just so many issues and the polls helped sort that out. Um, but there were questions in, in some states in the Senate uh, races that were surprises in terms of the numbers. And, and I think that, you know, requires pollsters when the vote is completed to, you know, uh, take a look under the hood and try to get a sense of what worked and what didn't. Um, one of the things we learned that uh, from 2016, and we've talked about this uh, with, with the Hill, uh, you know, the, the the fix in 2016, this weight by education fix, which is not something we uh, subscribed or agreed with. Um, clearly, the pollsters who did that did not find that that was in fact the fix. And I think it points more and more to geography as, uh, you know, this rural, suburban, urban divide that we have uh, and it's, it becomes a sampling issue. How are you getting the right people? And that leads us in a very different direction than what do we do at the end of the poll in terms of adjusting the sample and weighting by education. We never thought, we thought that was sort of like a symptom but not a cure. And, um, and I think that's why, you know, the New York Times and CNN and others really had a very difficult time with this because weighting by education just did not do it. Uh, at, at all in terms of the pre-election polls. So that's a long answer to a very short question, but I think it's one that uh, kind of touches on some of the things.